Alright, Moses Lotus, back for part three. My response back to William Albrecht. Um, William uh, takes issue yet again um, with the phrase, uh, justified by faith alone, but not by a faith that is alone. Again, part of the problem is that in a, within Roman Catholic theology, the, there is no distinction between justification and sanctification, whereas Protestant theology makes that distinction. Okay? Justification would be the act of God whereby he pronounces us righteous, not for our sake, but, for, but uh, for the righteousness of Jesus Christ. On that basis, we are declared righteous. Okay? Sanctification would be considered a work of God, okay? which uh, uh, an act takes place, bam. Okay? The work of God is, is, is pr it's a process, it's, it's a lifelong process whereby we put to death the deeds of the flesh and where we rise to life uh, more and more in Christ Jesus. Okay? And that takes place throughout our entire lifetime. It, it does not get completed up un uh, until death, basically, um, when we finally uh, we go to be with the Lord and we are indeed entirely pure or spotless. Uh, we don't have to worry about the taints of sin uh, still getting in the way of our Christian walk. Uh, there's nothing to impede us uh, from enjoying full and perfect fellowship with Jesus Christ at that point. Okay, so justified by a faith, um, justified by faith alone, but not by a faith that is alone. Again, in uh, as a Protestant, I believe uh, that the Bible teaches that faith and repentance, um, they that they, uh, they happen at the same time. Um, you cannot have one without the other. A person cannot have true saving faith without repentance. You cannot have true repentance without saving faith. In that scenario, both of them, you know, either one would be false. Okay? True saving faith is always accompanied by true godly repentance. Okay, not a shallow repentance as, uh, as the world is, but a, a true godly repentance, true turning away from sins. Okay? Um, because justification and sanctification, there is that distinction, as William should know, since he was a Protestant and says that he understands the doctrine fully uh, and completely, then of uh, faith and repentance, repentance is not the means that results in God justifying us. Okay? It's faith. Faith alone. Okay, now again, in salvation, okay, salvation, it's an umbrella term for many concepts in there, including uh, uh, election, predestination, uh, calling, uh, faith, repentance, conversion, you know, everything in, in, the, uh, in, the, uh, in the Ordo Salutis, or in the chain of redemption. Um, Faith is what brings about justification. Okay, uh, repentance. Uh, again, repentance isn't something that's instantaneous. Repentance is something that we do throughout all our Christian life. I don't repent just one time, and that's it. I don't believe just one time, and that's it. Okay. Uh, in in the Greek, uh, the present tense is used. Uh, the ones who are believing. Okay. Um, that means that my belief is something that's continual. My repentance is something that's continual that goes on for all, my entire Christian life. Okay, but it's that faith. The moment I have it, okay, the moment that God grants it as a gift, in that instant, I am justified. Okay, that's what that means. Now that faith, that faith alone justifies me. Now what sanctifies me? The faith is going to keep helping there, okay, and the repentance is going to keep going. But faith, uh, or rather, how do I put it? Good works does not result in my justification. Repentance does not result in my justification. It's going to be the faith, and the faith alone. I hope that can kind of clarify. It. I was trying to come up with some sort of analogy to try to 
um, to try to get that, I was trying to think of maybe something within the body, like body cells. Um, when nutrients come in there, it's certain nutrients alone that may, you know, maybe like proteins that replenish your muscles and stuff like that. But those proteins, how they get to the muscles, uh, are not alone. They come, you know, with other nutrients in them and stuff like that that result in other stuff. Anyway, I couldn't perfect it, so I just kind of threw it out there. Um, anyway, William's comments uh, uh, about the confusion. Uh, again, confusion doesn't make something ridiculous. Confusion uh, doesn't result in something not making sense whatsoever. There's nothing contradictory logically in the statement. Um, it's basically just uh, um, an unwillingness to make the distinction that Protestant theology makes. And that's the context that you have to look at it in. Uh, again, if you try to understand it in Roman Catholic categories, then yes, you know, because you, the the idea of justification it, it also includes sanctification uh, with it. There's a confusion of those topics versus in Protestant theology. Again, there's a distinction, not a separation, okay, where one can happen without the other. There's just a distinction that is made between them. Okay. Uh, William goes on to point out some verses um, trying to refute uh, justification by faith alone. You know, one of them, 1 Corinthians 13, 13. Uh, really didn't understand why William was going with this text. The context... Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, the context of, uh, of this is Paul's talking about spiritual gifts and the use of them. In 1 Corinthians 12, he's talking about gifts and, you know, everybody having gifts of healing, you know, earnestly desire the best gifts, yet I will show you the more excellent way. What is the more excellent way? Love. We agree. Okay? Nothing wrong there. But again, look at the hypotheticals that he's going with, you know, in 13.2. These are all hypotheticals. If, if, if. Okay? That's what he's presenting. And then he goes on to say what love is. And he says the greatest, you know, now abide faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. There's nothing to disagree with there. And, you know, William tries to go off of this whole thing. Oh, Protestants can't handle this. They can't handle that verse. A law of Calvin may as well have taken out all these texts, too. Um, I really don't understand that. Again, I, I'm agreeing with Paul in the context of what he's speaking. If I have all these spiritual gifts and I can't function in love toward my brethren, what am I? What have I done? How am I, how am I fulfilling uh, the law? How am I living out the life of Jesus Christ if I can't show love toward God and toward man? You know, and so the idea is basically kind of what I was getting at with James, and uh, uh, <laughs> I, uh, basically that you know, if I say that I have all these things, and even if I do have them, but if I don't show them, who are they meant for? You know, uh, Ephesians two ten says that uh, we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, not by our good works. We create. We were created in Christ Jesus as born again for the good works. But if I don't show them, what good am I? That is dead faith. I may as well just, you know, be a trophy up on the wall or something like that. I'm not doing anything. You have to do, and you have to do for the good of, of your fellow men. You, and it should be done in love. I mean, I, I totally agree. You know, uh, with Galatians 5, 6, you know, nothing counts but faith working through love. I agree. Luther said the same thing. I, I, I don't understand why William keeps thinking that we don't say these things. And then why he says, you know, well, I was a Protestant. Of course I understand these things. Well, show me. Here we go again. <laughs> show me that you understand these things. Why is it that every time we engage in these things, I mean, I mean, why I'm engaging in, in, in back in video right now, I don't know. I, I, there's a, a complete straw man that William keeps erecting for himself to fight against um, that really I I found myself correcting more than anything that way he can have at least something real and tangible to fight against to debate against but doesn't do it doesn't do it I'll go ahead and continue in another video